Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means should hurt you. I love that. He has given us power over all the power of the enemy. And if we weren't going to have to be concerned with the enemy, then why did he give us power over all his power? No, yes, we need to know and we need to use that power that he has given us. He is our enemy. We are at war and it's time we engage. Okay. Again, 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Um, okay, so when, <clears throat> when the battle, I mean the real battle, I mean hell and everything that that means came to our house. I didn't know how to fight. And I want people to know how to fight. I feel like that's really my calling, although I love deliverance. But my calling is to teach the body of Christ how to fight. Um, so that's what the spiritual warfare is about, is fighting the enemy. And there is a difference between prayer and warfare. Prayer is when you are addressing God in thanksgiving, in petition, um, praying in intercession. That is prayer. Warfare is when you are addressing the enemy, actively addressing the enemy, which a long time ago, I lived my life on the defense. You know, I'd be happily living my Christian life, and then the devil would show up, and I would, you know, start trying to defend myself against him, but no longer. I go there first. I address the enemy first in that way, because what God showed me is, because my question was, Lord, how, how come every time I'm going to go somewhere or do something my car breaks down or I have a flat or I get sick or the kids get sick. All these things start to happen. And what he made me aware of is that when I sit down to pray in the morning, he's already, the enemy has already assigned spirits to come and listen to my prayers and report back to him. Now he's got a strategy. Okay. It's going to be a flat tire. It's going to be a sore throat. It's going to be a migraine headache. It's going to be the kids. It's going to be, it's, that's what happens. I, I, I make this comparison. Let's say you live in a neighborhood. <clears throat> everybody knows everybody. Let's say you're on a cul-de-sac and y'all get together. You, you visit together. You drink coffee together. You barbecue together. Your kids are all playing together. And, and then somebody moves out of the neighborhood and somebody that is uh, undesirable moves into your neighborhood. Let's say a drug dealer or a, a, a pimp or whoever would not be desirable. And they have this vicious dog and lets it run loose so that when you... Well, want to go over to your neighbor's house, you should open that door and that dog is just like arr, 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 running you back in your house. That's how I see the devil. Until somebody puts that dog on a chain and wraps him to a short chain on a tree, that dog is going to have his way. But when you chain that dog to a tree, now you have the freedom to live your pleasant life like you should be able to live it. So that's what we have to do to the enemy. You know, when David and Goliath fought, one of the things that it says about David is that he ran toward the enemy. 
He didn't run from the enemy. He ran toward him. See, I used to run from him. Now I'm running toward him because I understand that I have the power over him and I can, I have some things that I can do to destroy what his plans are, his strategy. Let's frustrate him for a while, right? So we don't have to be afraid to address the enemy because we've been given more power. Uh, sometimes I will, uh, I bind him, I rebuke him, I render him powerless. And people are like, you don't have, you don't have that kind of power to do that. Uh, the Bible says I do. And I made a decision early in my walk with God that I was going to believe what it said. The first book I read was James. And in, in the book of James, it says that if you be a hearer of the word only and not a doer, you deceive your own selves. And boy, that was enough for me. I said, Lord, not only am I going to read your word and believe your word, I'm going to do it. Because I didn't want to deceive my own self. And we, if the Bible says it, you can believe it. He's not, God is not a man that he should lie. And he will back you up on his word. He stands behind his word. He is a man of his word. He means what he says. And hallelujah. It, yes, hallelujah is right. Okay. So in prayer, we address God. In warfare, we address the enemy. And we need to stop being polite to the devil. You know, when we go along with, we compromise and go along with something, just, you know, the devil knows that as a Christian, you're supposed to be nice. We be nice. And God even told me one day that I was too polite to the devil. That was shocking. But yes, we are too polite to the devil because we're wrestling not with flesh and blood. It's just like with my little granddaughter. Uh, when she was two years old, she was pulling these flowers off of a vine that I had planted and bringing me the flowers. And at first, you know, I was wanted to play her little game. And I would say, oh, I would smell it. It smells so good. Thank you. So, oh, Grammy just loves this flower until she brought me about 75 of them. And I got tired of the game. <laughs> I said, okay, that's a Grammy doesn't need any more flowers. And she gave me a look like I'll decide when it's enough. And so I had a book on the swing and I said, oh, look, Kaylee, Grammy's got a book. Come over here and I'll read it to you. And God had just told me that morning to stop being polite to the devil. And when I made that little diversion for her, I heard you're going to be polite to the devil. I was shocked and I thought, no, I'm not. I pointed right at her and little things. She stood up at attention. Her eyes got real big. I thought I might make her cry because I was being very firm. I said, I, you spirit of rebellion, I bind you and break your power. And I command you to get out of her now. You're not going to live in my grandbaby. And as soon as I finished, she said, amen. And I just died. It was just too funny. But, but yes, amen to that. And another time, Kyle wouldn't get out of bed. I was trying to get him to school. The other two rode the bus. He was in trouble. So I was going to deliver him to school because he would skip school. And I was calling up the stairwell. Kyle, get up. Get up. I'm, I must have gone to that stairway 10 times. Kyle, get up. Are you up? Get up. He'd mumble, mumble, mumble. And I, I'd had enough. I went to that stairway and I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you that spirit of rebellion. I command him to get out of the bed now. And I saw his head around the, the door facing. Mom, you all right? See, you start talking to the devil. You're not talking to flesh and blood. And it works. It is effective 
whenever you address the enemy and not flesh and blood. It says, neither give place to the devil. The devil is devil is not mentioned once in the Old Testament, but 62 times in the New Testament. O uh, place means occupancy. Do not give him occupancy or opportunity. Give him no room and no open space is reserved for him. As James 4, 7, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, there's two actions in that scripture. Submit to God and resist the devil. Let me tell you what resist means. It doesn't just mean, uh, oh, the devil is a liar. It doesn't mean, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. This is what resist means. Literally, to stand against, to withstand. In general, to move, to exert force, to exert power, to be in action or motion. It is an act, an action. It's not just a, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. No, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you know, people are tormented these days. Tormented, tormented, tormented. I also, speaking of uh, hearing things you've never heard before, people are telling me about demons manifesting. There's one that sits in the corner all the time, or there's one in my attic, or there's one, you know, something that they, there are demon manifestations. Another woman, her dead husband appeared on her bed. And I said, first of all, that is not your husband. That is an evil spirit. Well, it didn't seem evil. Well, not at first. They might be nice at first. I said, but before long, he'll be raping you every night and there won't be anything you can do about it. That's what the demons want to do. No, you have to open your mouth. It can't just be a thought. It doesn't say in Genesis that God thought, let there be light. He said, and we have to say, you have to speak to the enemy. You don't say, Lord, get this demon out of my room. No, he gave you that power and authority. You open your mouth and you say, you spirit that is impersonating my husband, I command you to get out of here in the name of Jesus and don't you come back. That thing will be gone like that. You have to open your mouth and address the enemy with force, with exertion, with power, with authority, because God's given it to us and he wants us to use it. That's what I mean by engaging in the warfare. Um, here's another strategy God gave me. David ran toward Goliath. What happened? Goliath um, disdained David. He's, he's mocking him. He's, he's talking down to him. Uh, the giant said, I'm going to kill you and feed your carcass to the fowls of the air. But what did David do? David said to him, you come to me with a shield and a sword. And, and Goliath cursed David in the name of his gods, his false gods, his idols. No, David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. See, he knew how to use the name. We have the name of Jesus. Use it in the name of Jesus. That was the only thing I was disappointed in that preacher in Canada. He was saying, you get out, get out of this, get off of this property, get it. But he never said, 
I was saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you know, that's where our power and authority is. I'm going to go out on a limb right now. The scriptures that say not all those who cry, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And, and they'll say, but Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do many mighty works in your name? That tells me they did. They were, they were successful in casting out demons in the name of Jesus. But Jesus said to them, that I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And I said, Lord, hold up. I need help here. If someone came in a meeting and is casting out demons in the name of Jesus and they are prophesying in the name of Jesus, how will I not be deceived? That was a concern to me. Jesus said, the things, the works that they did had nothing to do with the people. It was my name. And I honor my name. See, so even someone who doesn't know Jesus, but they cast out demons in the name of Jesus, those demons will go. It's the name. It's not the person. No. It's the name of Jesus. And, you know, people, oh, you don't want to be like those sons of Sceva. You know what? All those sons of Sceva were sorcerers and they didn't use the name of Jesus. They said, we, we adjure you. We speak to you in the name that Paul uses. See, they didn't say first person in the name of Jesus. No. So. Don't be afraid. You know, I hear people all the time, I just don't feel worthy. Listen, okay, you need to go back and read your Bible because the scripture says that he, what he did has made you worthy. There is nothing we can do to be worthy enough other than receive Jesus. And he, he becomes our righteousness. He becomes our worthiness. He becomes our holiness. Everything that we can't do on our own, he did it. So I want you to have the confidence that Jesus Christ is the deliverer. Jesus Christ is the healer. And he has told us to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He has told us to cast out devils. So I want you to be encouraged today. You know what? If somebody, I've already looked at all of this because of questions people have asked. Are you going to take the vaccine? No. Well, what if they come to your house with a gun? I've already thought about all these things. You know what I'm going to do if I see them coming up on my porch? I strike you with blindness in the name of Jesus. That's what Paul did to Elias. Remember? Remember, that was in the New Testament. He, he said, you will be blind. And it said he was groping around looking for someone to lead him. We, we don't know what we're going to be faced with. But I look to the word of God. What did Jesus do? What did Paul do? What did Peter do? What did the disciples do? What in the book of Acts, what did they do? That's where I get my, my education, my knowledge, my virtue, my faith. It's all in the word of God. So I'm, I want you to know I'm not telling you something today that is going to get you in trouble with God. First, bind the strong man. You know, we have binding and loosing. And it says, first, bind the strong man. God instructed me some years ago to begin to bind the strong man in my children. If you have a person that you've been praying for and you're not seeing a lot of results, start binding the strong man over his life. Well, who is the strong man? It doesn't say bind the strong man of anything. It just says bind the strong man. 
I don't know who the strong man is, but Lord, I bind the strong man over his life in the name of Jesus. We can bind antichrist spirits in people. If you, if you, you know, people who uh, you want to be saved and you've been praying for them for a long time and there's not anything happening, start binding the strong man over his life. Bind that antichrist spirit that's keeping him away from God. We have power to bind and loose. And that's another way that we can enter into this warfare. At the beginning of this year, I, I've gotten a lot of emails from people whose families are being ravished with drug, drug problems with their kids. I, I thought to myself, Lord, I, I, I'm going to start a crusade, <laughs> not really, but having people join in with me. I haven't done it yet, but start binding the strong man of drugs over your city, over your house, over, over the nation. Uh, all this business going on down at the border, it's all drug related sex trafficking, all these evils in this world, we can start binding the strong man over sex trafficking. We can bind the strong man over drugs, over alcohol, over whatever is going on in your family. Bind the strong man. That is a real, um, a real powerful thing to do for people. A lot of people can't even uh, accept the Lord because they they can't um, there's a curse there there's something holding them back so we can start binding and loosening that's all part of warfare first bind the strong man we can't spoil the house of the enemy we can't uh, destroy those works of the devil unless we first bind the strong man and here's another thing god told me i would go to him every day because of the things that were going on in my family crying out to him god help me my my children my children and one day he said to me, why are you coming to me with this? And I was flabbergasted. Like, who else? Who else would I go to, Lord? He said, did I say to you that if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed that you would ask me to move your mountain? That was his question to me. Is that what I said to you? That if you have faith, even as a grain of mustard seed, that you will ask me to move your mountain? No. That word says that if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say, you shall say, be thou removed and cast into the sea and it shall be done. That's what God said. So, I think a lot of times we don't see our prayers answered because we're asking God to do things that he has given us the power and authority to address in our lives. It's a call to action. It's a call into active duty in spiritual warfare in this earth to destroy the works of the devil. It's just like Moses that's the same thing God said to Moses. His back was against the Red Sea. He had led those people out of captivity, out of slavery. And they were ready to kill him because now, look, look where we are. We're out here. We're all going to be killed. And Moses is trying to quiet the people. This is in Exodus 14. You can go read it for yourself. He said, uh, stand still. Stand still and see the hand of the Lord. For this day, you shall see the Egyptians no more. And he's, he's trying to calm the people down. And God interrupted him and said, why are you crying out to me? Isn't that amazing? You know what he told him? But raise up 
thy rod. And we have a rod of authority. It is the name of Jesus and everything that he told us to do, the power and the authority. Yes, I love prayer, but not without warfare. You, you must do both parts of that. Prayer is precious and good and personal and um, to build you up and to uh, help you. But warfare is addressing the enemy. We must do both. I'm encouraging you today, if you have not had that as a part of your Christian life, to begin to address the enemy because you have the power and authority to do that. Take that bad dog and put it on a short chain and put tie him to that tree where he can stop messing with you and with your children and everything else that, that concerns you. It's so easy. It doesn't take that long. I, I told my brother, he had a brand new truck. They were taking a trip. They had all their luggage in the back seat of this brand new truck. They stop at a restaurant in Houston on the way to the airport. And while they're in the restaurant eating, somebody broke into their truck and took all their luggage, uh, everything. Now, my brother didn't even know the truck had been broken into because they had one of those key things and they knew how to get the numbers or something, you know, you know, the bad people are always one step ahead <laughs> of the righteous people. But, but see, God has given us helps and the angels are one of them. And I told my brother, I said, how long would it have taken you when you're driving into the parking lot to say, Lord, I, I call on some angels to stand around my vehicle that no evil happened to it while we're in here eating. How long did that take? You know what we rely on? Well, I've got insurance and it covers everything that got stolen. Yeah, but I have something better than insurance. You know, why go through that? Why, why suffer the losses that you don't have to, to suffer? And, um, you know, it's, I, I just don't understand he, why people can't get it and do it. It, you know, why? Because it's not in our, our everyday life. I, you know what? The word says tradition, the traditions of men make the word of God of no effect. Our tradition is to buy insurance on our cars. And, you know, if something happens, well, we'll just get it fixed. Well, why not just put the angels around it and don't have those things happen anymore? I mean, that's the better way. It says in the word that Jesus showed them a more excellent way. And I guess that's what I'm doing today. I want to show you a more excellent way to have greater success in your prayers. And that is going to be with spiritual warfare. So add to your, let me go back to those scriptures. Um, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord. And to these, this is my edit, 
add spiritual warfare. So I hope today that I've given you some scriptural basis to understand your your power and your authority that Jesus Christ has given his life so that you can have. You know, if you got an inheritance, wouldn't you want all of it? Wouldn't you want to have all of it? Here's your inheritance, but I'm only going to give you this and this and this. No, I want all of it. Don't you want all of it? And I, I want to encourage you to begin to think differently. You're going to have to think about these things and give it thought and ask God to help you remember these things when they're needed. And that's even a promise too. That's a precious promise that the Holy Ghost will bring it to your remembrance as it is needed. And that I can attest to that. It is true. Everything that God has said to us and given us is true. It's the truth. So I want to pray for you before we leave over some of these things that are standing in our way. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I cover each person with your blood, your precious protective blood right now as I pray. And Satan, I bind you, rebuke you, and render you powerless from this prayer. I call for mighty angels to go right now to every person over their home and do warfare in the heavens over them so that they can have um, an open heaven to receive everything that you want them to have today. I bind all those uh, spirits of spiritual deafness, dumbness, blindness. Um, I, I command the eyes to be opened and the ears to hear and hearts to receive everything that you have given them today. I bind uh, and break the power of the spirit of fear right now. Fear of doing any of these things that I said. Fear of even believing any of these things that I've said today because they're all out of your word, Father. I break that fear off your people. I break the power of timidity off of your people. Uh, being afraid to exercise the power and authority that you have given them. I bind that and break that power of timidity and cowardice, that shying away, pulling back, running from uh, the, the warfare that you have equipped us to do. All spirits of cowardice, I break your power and command you to get out of God's people right now. All of the spiritual MIAs, those that have been missing in action, I call you out of being missing from action, of, of um, um, oh, I can't think of the term that the army uses, but like a conscientious, conscientious deflector or something like that, that are afraid to engage in the battle. I bind that fear in Jesus' name. All those spirits that make you want to run away from it, to run away from the devil, fear of the devil. I bind and break the power of fear of the devil. I call all deserters, all of those that have not engaged in the war, back into active duty now in the name of Jesus. All fear of addressing the enemy, fear of addressing the enemy. I break your power, fear of engaging in the warfare, fear of engaging the enemy. I bind that spirit and break its power in Jesus' name. All of the fainting spirits in Jesus' name, I command every fainting spirit, get out all weakness, spirit of the conscientious objector, if that was the term. All the spirits of the conscientious objector, I break your power. Fear of retaliation, fear that if you engage the devil, he's going to beat you up and win. We have the victory. So I bind that fear of retaliation in Jesus' name, fear of being attacked. I don't know who told you the lie that if you don't mention the devil, he'll leave you alone, but that is a lie. He is out to target you with trouble and with pressure. 
So I bind and break the power of that fear of being attacked. I come against all trembling hearts, all trembling hearts. I bind you and break your power in Jesus' name. Trembling hands, shaking in your boots, knees knocking together, all those manifestations of fear go in the name of Jesus. Fear of doing it wrong, saying the wrong thing. I bind that spirit of fear that you might do it wrong and command it to go. Fear that it won't work. In the name of Jesus, I bind and break the power of the fear that what God said is not true. I come against every fear of uh, every spirit of doubt and unbelief, and I even come against and break the power of the evil heart of unbelief. I command that to get out of God's people right now. All manipulation by fear. I break manipulation off of you. All the sons of Sceva spirits, sons of Sceva, scared you're going to get your clothes ripped off and run out of the house. I bind that spirit of fear in Jesus' name. I bind and break the power of all error, religious teachings that are in error that have told you that you've got to you've got to be a certain something in order to do these things if you have Jesus Christ on the inside of you and you can utter the name of Jesus you are equipped and he will stand behind you and he will honor his name I bind all the spirits of wrong teaching all spirits of wrong teaching I break the power of all the wrong teaching that you have had over the course of your lifetime. All religious spirits, I bind and break the power of religious spirits that are holding you back in Jesus' name. All fear tactics, all fear tactics of the enemy, I break your power off God's people. Deception from the enemy about warfare. All deception, I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command you to get out of God's people. All the spirits that are telling you, the lying spirits, I bind and break the power of lying spirits that are telling you, you better stay away from that. You better not be doing that in Jesus' name. That spirit that causes you to uh, tuck your tail between your legs, I break that power of that spirit in Jesus name. All the scaredy cat spirits go in the name of Jesus. Running and hiding, deflecting. I break the power of running and hiding and deflecting in Jesus name. The spirits of dismay, the spirit of dismay. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. That spirit of believing that you don't have enough power. That's a lie. I break that lying spirit in Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of rebellion and refusal to fight in Jesus' name. Go, get out of God's people. That spirit of rebellion that says, I don't want to do that. Uh, all the flimsy excuses as to why you don't do it. I come against all laziness, spiritual laziness and lethargy and sloth. Go in the name of Jesus. All blindness. Go. All lameness. Go in the name of Jesus. We are not lame. We have uh, been given everything we need to engage and win this battle in Jesus' name through Jesus. I come against spiritual stupor, stupor, you go in the name of Jesus, slumber, the spirit of slumber, uh, the spirit of drunkenness, I break your power and command you to go, all complacency, I bind and break the, the power of the spirits of complacency, shirking your responsibility, being irresponsible. I break your power in Jesus' name. All the lackadaisical spirits, go. Kesara, sara spirits, go in the name of Jesus. Lukewarmness, go. Lukewarmness, I command you to leave God's people. Coldness, go in the name of Jesus. Being cold, I command you to go. Lord, I, I ask you to fan the flame 
of their uh, of their vigor in the name of Jesus. I break the lie, uh, all the lying spirits that he'll tell you, uh, you know, you can't do that. You better not do that. You're not powerful enough. You're not worthy. Uh, look what you did last week. The accuser of the brethren, I break your power in Jesus name. All foolishness, go. All foolishness, spiritual blindness, I break your power. All spiritual deafness, I command your ears to be opened. I command your eyes to be opened in the name of Jesus. I come against false doctrines, false doctrines and doctrines of demons. Go in the name of Jesus and all antichrist spirits, all antichrist spirits. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for uh, the ability to cast out devils in your name. We thank you for deliverance. And right now, I bless your people. I ask you to bless them as well with, um, with diligence. I bless your people with diligence. I speak virtue into your people. I speak, I stir up their faith, Lord, as they have heard the word and their faith has been ignited to do your works and to destroy the works of the devil. I bless them with valor, valor and strength and courage and firmness and boldness. Receive, receive these things right now in the name of Jesus fearlessness, receive fearlessness and bravery. Lord, I bless your people with bravery like David who ran toward the enemy and did, he turned the tables on the enemy. So whatever the enemy is saying to you, turn the table and put it back on the devil. Start praising God for the opposite of whatever the devil says, you're not worthy. Lord, thank you that you have made me worthy. You, you can't do that. Lord, I thank you that you have equipped me to do it and already have the victory. So turn the table on the devil and start praising God for what uh, the devil is, the opposite of what the devil is telling you. Lord, I bless your people with undaunted courage and boldness. I bless them to speak the truth. I bless them to uh, preach and to speak boldly. I bless them with purity of heart and uprightness of mind. Lord, I, I activate right now the mind of Christ that each of us received when we accepted you as our savior, I activate, I speak activation to the mind of Christ. Lord, I, I ask you to bless your people with virtue and I speak strength to them. I speak moral goodness. I speak um, an obedience, a voluntary obedience to the word of God. I bless your people today in reminding them about the power and authority that you have given them. And I stir it up, Lord, for the battle. I stir it up for the battle. I bless us today with more knowledge, Lord, more knowledge, comprehension, and understanding. I bind all the spirits of arrested development in our minds from, from traumas in our past, even uh, generationally inherited uh, uh, arrested development. I break the power of that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that, that we as your people will reverence you, that we will reverence you, and that we will um, have a careful observance to the things that you have told us in the Bible, not only the things that you told us not to do, Lord, but to do the things you have told us to do. We thank you, Father. We love you today. We thank you for the word. We thank you for uh, power and authority. We thank you that you have not left us defenseless. I command all those spirits right now of hopelessness and despair 
to go. All spirits of heaviness and oppression and depression and suicidal thoughts and uh, wanting to leave this world. Um, I bind all those spirits and break their power and command them to get out of God's people right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just thank you. We are so thankful for your faithfulness, for your love, and for for your shed blood, Lord, that, that has defeated Satan, that has healed us, that is delivering us, that is breaking the chains of bondage. Satan, I command you to loose God's people in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, I bind every uh, spirit of backlash and retaliation right now from the enemy. I cover each person with the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, angels to stand around them shoulder to shoulder that no evil penetrate. Protect their families, Lord. Protect their homes and their possessions and help us to be um, active duty Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Merrill, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm here. Okay, well. Great, great teaching. Great teaching. Uh, you just always bring strength in the word when you teach. I thank you that you have always been a mentor to me, even from the beginning when my father passed away. Yes. I remember you, that day. <laughs> yeah, you and Jerry have been mentors to me and taught me so many things. And I appreciate it so much. And I it's thank a, you more. It's an honor, Meryl. I I'm always you. available. I know you are. I know you are. But I thank the Lord for you and Jerry. Um, I thank the Lord that this teaching today that we will go out in strength. Yes. Not back up, but go forward and drive the enemy back continuously yes. every day. The enemy yes. is vicious and cruel, mm -hmm. never sleeps, constantly coming at us from all sides. Mm -hmm. But we have the spirit of the word Yes. In the name of Jesus and his yes. blood. Yes. His word to go before us and to protect us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Carla. You're dismissed, everybody. See y'all at six. We'll see you this afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Carla. You're welcome. I love you guys. Love you too. Love you too. God bless you. God bless I received you. I received that. Blessing to you. you the word. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah, for hosting us. Yes, Deborah. Welcome. Love you, Brother Merle. Love every one of you. God bless you Amen. all.